Okay, so, so what I want to talk about today is this uh, joint work with uh, Ansi Latinen, which uh, has decided the string topology of finite groups of, of Lie type. And um, the aim of this is to make a, a, a connection between uh, string topology, which is a series of uh, Janice and Sullivan, and which sort of started out as something about manifolds, and then uh, finite groups of Lie type, which are sort of classical optics in, in finite groups there. So that's um, always good. <clears throat> and uh, the starting point of this is also somehow uh, classical, uh, namely this theorem of Quillen. Always good to start your talk with the theorem of Quillen. So, uh, so what Quillen proved uh, in his calculation of K theory of finite fields was that if you look at Quillen FQ with coefficients in uh, FL, then this had a very nice structure. This was just a uh, polynomial ring in, uh, in variables, tensor and exterior algebra here, in, uh, in variables, uh, at least here if uh, Q is congruent to one mod, mod L, and, and this is only additively, uh, so if L is equal to, to two, then we should have uh, then it's only additively on this uh, Q is covering to one mod mod four. <clears throat> so so he, he proved this very satisfying uh, result. The other thing you can you can you can you can do, which is I don't even know how to who to attribute this to. This is uh, this old calculation that if you take uh, the cohomology of the of the free loop space uh, on the on the complex points of uh, oh, uh, DLN, uh, DLN over the over the complex numbers and say this will again with the L uh, coefficients. So this is the, the free loop space. This is just the <laughs> this is just a set of uh, the space of map from the from S1 to uh, the BDL in uh, of the complex numbers here. So the free loop space here. Uh, this this in fact is the same answer. You get exactly the the same the same the same calculation. So this is a. It's a little bit weird because you can say this is a finite group, this is some uh, huge infinite group, and you can also say this is this would also be the uh, homogeneous equivalent to, to the to the loop group here on, on, on the complex complex. So this somehow says that this, this loop group, the classifying space of this loop group, has the same cohomology as this finite group. Uh, so are the degrees uh, of x of two and of y one? Yeah, so the, no, so the degrees here of, yeah, I should have written that. So the degrees of x here is, uh, is 2i, and the degree of y here is uh, 2i. Go up sort of 2, 4, blah, blah, 2, 2, 2n here, and here they go 1. <clears throat> so, uh, and then people sort of started calculating this for, for other, uh, okay, so maybe I should. Give an example. So, for instance, for uh, for n equals to one, what does it say? It says that here one if q is if q star. So this is isomorphic to set modulo uh, q minus one. So so if we calculate this cohomology at least as L when l divides q minus one, then we get a, a polynomial. In certain exterior, where the polynomial will be in degree two, and the exterior will be in degree one. And likewise, if we did the the free loop space <coughs> on this thing, so this would be the, uh, the 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 free loop space here. So this would be homotopy equivalent to maps from this one to uh, ES one. So this is just the infinity. And we see that 
uh, that this that this split so that this becomes a copy of S1 and a copy of C to infinity. And we see maybe a little bit to our surprise that it is true if L divides Q minus one, then these two have actually have the same cohomology. But but you know these are really not the same space, right? So 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 uh, so 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 saying that you know obviously there cannot be a map because then they would have to be almost equivalent spaces. The isomorphism of cohomology doesn't preserve any higher structure, right? It does not preserve any. Uh, well, <laughs> it does not. <laughs> At least it does not preserve the obvious higher structure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, so, uh, right. So, so, so this even led Tezuka, yeah, please write my text to to conjecture in 1998. Uh, <laughs> actually. You know, could be true. More, I mean, he calculated this for a lot of groups, and uh, sort of this. Uh, Adam seemed to, to to hold here that so so what his um, what his conjecture was that this should really be hold for any uh, finite group of any type. Type the cohomology of the finite group of lead type should be the same as the cohomology of the free group. Because you calculate this in a bunch of cases. When when L divides Q minus 1, so Q is congruent to 1 mod L, and this is only added to the <laughs> when L is equal to 2 unless, unless uh, Q so, <coughs> so this is sort of weird because it indicates that you know somehow four, two, four, 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 Okay. So, so, but again, this came without any any sort of structural explanation. So and uh, for uh, like say simple group G, it will be uh, degrees uh, even degrees two di and uh, all the odd degree two di minus one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so this, this can be. I mean, so in the well, so this is a thing. In in the case where the prime is large enough, this will exactly be the case that you can that the degrees will just be the the ordinary degrees of the Weyl group. So you can you can tell what these degrees mm -hmm. are. So both hand sides are easily calculable. But say if L is equal to two, so you're at a torsion prime, both of these sides become uncalculable. So you, you don't do not know, you know, you cannot calculate either side for, for very small primes. But is it like bad primes for uh, Yeah, so it's for bad primes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> for, for good primes, with the right definition of good primes, these two would both be polynomial tensor exterior. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> so 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 how this was done done classically well you can say if you have if you have some classifying space pg then you can look at a self map uh, like this from pg to pg and then you can say well then you can do lpg to pg you have a vibration uh, like this, you can you can try to run the Sayer spectral sequence on that. In good cases, uh, it collapses. In, in bad cases, you have some differentials. And likewise, you can say, <coughs> well, so here you can say, what? Well, how, how do you get a spectral? How do you calculate things for for finite groups of lead type? And then you can of course do different things. You can try to restrict to subgroups and and things like that. There's also a slightly um, uh, sort of higher order approach, which is a serum again to to pull it and uh, three letter 
from, uh, from the line images. So there is, in fact, a, a relationship between uh, you have some way of relating these finite groups of these types to homotopy theory. So this says that <laughs> it is a, it's a split uh, reductive algebraic group over the integers. Then you can look at the uh, then you can look at uh, the classifying space of the thing over FQ bar. And then you can have a a, uh, a provenience. So how you define a finite group or lead type is that you look at the algebraic group over the algebraic closure, and then you take uh, fixed points under a uh, well, a, in more general, a Steinberg endomorphism. So this is just a map, a self map, which raised to some power becomes a standard provenience. So just raising to the two power. So so this thing here is a finite group or lead type. It's a Frobenius, it's a Steinberg endomorphism. And if you want, you can just think of that as Frobenius. But what they what they what they showed was that there's a map which which involves uh, internal internal homotopy theory going to the classifying space of the corresponding uh, group over the complex numbers, and you have to put an L completion here where L is a prime different from P or Use the piece power, <coughs> and then you have the Frobenius acting over here as well, where it will be one of these unstable atoms operations. And the, the, the theorem they prove this, but then this is a homotopy equivalence. So this is a here sort of raising to the choose power corresponds to uh, what we usually call the, the unstable atoms operation. Uh, Yes, it's like with a twist in the appropriate. Well, so this is this is a case where you just had a had a had a Frobenius endomorphism, and for okay. a Steinberg endomorphism, there's a like there's a corresponding way to define the. So, so is this uh, conjecture known, or is it known at least for classical groups? So it is known for some classical uh, groups, yeah, yeah. Um, it, for good primes, for it is it is known for yeah. So he could calculate it for good for good primes where there was no uh, where there was no torsion in the cohomology. Then it's, it's pretty easy to run the two spectral sequences and see that they both give the the same answer. So the, so the question is for for bad primes and bad primes could come from two things. Both that could be. Sort of the bad primes in the in the simply connected version, but there could also be fundamental group issues, for instance, which which would give sort of bad primes for which were ar arbitrarily large, for instance, for the A family because you have. So if you take like such PGLN, for example, then there will be issues with many primes. Yes. Sir. If you take PGL, yeah, yeah, the, the yeah, the connected version, exactly, yeah, yeah. All yeah. divisors of n. Exactly, 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 yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, so so now we can say well then we also I mean if yeah more questions so so given this we also um, you know now we have at least a recipe for trying to to calculate because now we can also do try to do spectral sequences here over the on on the side here so 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 in this case we would have uh, which of the the homotopy fixed points here. We likewise have a have a spectral sequence where we have evaluation. So the homotopy fixed point. What are the homotopy fixed points? It's just instead of looking at the actual fixed point, we look at the you know this time we connect them with a pass. So this is a the pullback where we take BG BG say the pass from I to J to 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 G, and then we take the pullback along. Uh, BG here, and one, one sigma, uh, this is the, the homotopy fixed points here. You see here that the fiber is G, and that, so likewise the fiber over here is as well G. So we have such a vibration sequence here, which bakes BG and fiber G. So now we also see we have two 
sort of similar looking spectral sequences in the two cases. You know, the base is the same and the fiber is the same. But somehow, you know, they're twisted in, in, in quite a different way. <clears throat> so then you can try to, so we just write the spectral sequence and we have, you know, down here, in both spectral sequences, we have, we have BG here and here, since the cohomology here of E is finite, then we have, for instance, in the top class here, we have the fundamental class of, of, of G. I mean, G is, a, G is a compact Lie group, and therefore it will be a manifold, so it has a top dimensional class, which will sit over here along the fiber. And then we can try to start in the spectral sequence. <coughs> uh, so the each order page would look something like the cohomology of G times the cohomology. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it turns out that to study these kind of questions, uh, if we want to try to get a hold of this, we should really sort of uh, embrace the homotopy theory and try to work as much as we can over on this side here. And it turns out this is a nice generalization of these. I mean, this would be a, a complex L. Reductive complex algebraic group, so it would be equivalent to a, uh, a compact Lie group. But we, we might say we're just doing this in a homotopy setting and doing it at the prime level. <coughs> so if you get want to get this machinery to work, you should really uh, work with these uh, L compact groups over here. So uh, so from now on. B is an is an is an L compact group, and remember that's just an an, an L complete point in space, such that the cohomology of the loop space on B G with its L coefficients here is finite. So an L compact group is just a space, which is pointed, so we can take the loop space, and then we assume that it's L complete, which means that we localize with respect to all mod L homology equivalences, and then we're making the assumption that the cohomology here is finite, which just means that it's sort of like a compact Lie group, right? But this is just like a homotopy theoretic uh, condition. So sort of very easy. And so then the surprising thing is that uh, but these uh, L compact groups have all the structure of um, of of of, of um, a compact Lie group basically. But now we're localized, so everything works at the prime. So, so what? So there's a classification of this, which is this, which says that uh, connected L compact groups. And one to one correspondence with, with root data C over the elliptic integers. So if you if you were working at a prime um, at a prime L, then instead of doing you know these area works just as before, but now your root data are just over the elliptic integers instead of over the integers, and you have a classification of these which is sort of derived from the classification. Of uh, complex reflection groups, but it's sort of a little bit more subtle so here, and you have to have it's a root data, it's not just a root circle. You actually have an, an integral basis over the elliptic integers. <coughs> and likewise, you have the outer automorphism of BG, so the self homotopy equivalences will likewise be the outer automorphisms of the root data. So, in particular, you know. Your self equivalence is a PG correspond to self equivalence for the root data. So in particular, you have, since this is over the elliptic integers, you have many more uh, self maps of the L compact group because you have the elliptic units in there. I mean, the units of the integers are just plus minus one, but the units of the elliptic integers are big. So this is where these, uh, so these, uh, these 
or Venus maps or Steinberg endomorphisms actually become, you know, become units over here because we're working at Jewish congruent one model. Is this still true when D is not connected? Oh, when D is D, D is a root datum, so that's yeah. always connected. And here it says con, which is short for connected. <laughs> yes. <So>, yeah. <coughs> what, what? I mean, if it decomposes as a product. Yeah, that's still okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's still still okay. Yeah, yeah. So it works for so it works for any connected uh, ill compact group. Yeah. Uh, and and so it's a, yeah, but it doesn't it, it sort of corresponds to the classification of reductive uh, algebraic groups. So so it also tells you homes between different ones. Um, no, this is about outer outer automorph it's about automorphisms. The, the, the yeah, but if you take a product, yes, and the homes between them. A part of the automorphisms. Uh, the well, the, the ones which are aut automorphisms. Yes, yes. I mean the endomorphisms. I mean there's a there's a restriction that they need to be automorphisms. Yeah. So so you do not get a description of. I mean, if you had a description of all self maps, then it's it's true that you get a description of all. Homomorphism oh, also oh, because you can embed homomorphism in self maps, mm -hmm. but the restriction of automorphism is a is a real uh, restriction. So you need okay, to, thank you. which sort of forces things to be detected mm -hmm. on the maximum torus. Well, does that I mean? Are you making any claim about the higher homotopy groups about BG or not? Uh, if I'm making in, in L, LPG in LPG. <laughs> I mean. <coughs> Out BG could be interpreted as oh, a space. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can describe you can describe the higher homotopy groups also in terms of the center. So there's a notion of the of the center of of, of, of the of the ill compact groups, which agree generalizes the center of of uh, the of the compact Lie group, and 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 this, these higher homotopy groups will be the completion of the center. Yeah. That particular statement out out D is just a This is just a pi naught statement. I could have made a little bit more elaborate statement which also took the higher homotopy groups into account. So. Okay, so 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 because of this classification I want to work more the time in terms of these hill compact groups and we'll see that this also um, helps Explain this. We had this annoying restriction that L was congruent to one. Uh, that the Q was congruent to one mod L, uh, which somehow well, is not always the case, right? So, so we would like to know what happens when that is not the case. So the theorem is due to classical by now. <coughs> huh? The theorem is due to classical by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was Casper uh, Andersen, Jesper Müller, uh, Antonio Viral, and myself from. Some years ago, yeah. It's still like finishing a long, long uh, uh, development. So, so in this L compact group, you can raise elements to theatic uh, elastic uh, power, even though there are no elements uh, somehow. You. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. So, right. So we so we get these two 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 spatial sequences here, and we you might also observe that that what is this LBG? This is somehow BGH. We we'll take the identity here. So if we were a little bit cheeky here, we might want to write that this is uh, L. So this is BG. Where we take the the field is one element. If we <laughs> it sort of agrees, uh, sort of notation wise. So, so this sort of region phase is sort of a limiting phase. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So this was finite groups of D type. So then I'll say uh, a few words about what is string topology. String topology. So string topology is basically uh, 
sort of encapsulated by, by one diagram, if we have two as ones, then we can uh, join them along at these points by uh, joining them here, and likewise if we have and this one, we can pinch in the middle. That gives us these two matrices. Usually, you know, if we have this is a usual map we use for our this is a like a co-multiplication, so if we map out of it, we get a multiplication. And then we have this map, which is a little bit annoying because it's it's somehow uh, it's, these two maps are going the wrong way, which prevents us from actually having this actually giving a multiplication. But we can try to turn one of these two maps around if we map out of it. And this is sort of how you, you construct these string multiplications. So, so if we write this up in terms of some space x, then we have the evaluation to, to x here. We have a have a diagonal map here, and then we can take the pullback here, then we get the free loop space up in x and x, but then now they're they're sort of joined on the base point is they have to agree here. This is a, a pullback square here. You see here that the fiber here is loop x times loop x. This is a pullback so here. The fiber is loop x loop x. Uh, then we can say we can also try to put uh, x here. Over here in this space, this is where we have this uh, this uh, concatenation where we where we multiply loops. So now it goes the other way since we're mapping out of it. So, so we go here to LX with, uh, with fiber loop X, and there's a map here on the fiber which is for the one to uh, concatenation of loops. So this is string topology, and then the point is that if we work stably, then the fiber of this map, if we assume that the loop, that the, that the uh, homology of loop x is finite, then we're in the situation where we have a transfer map. <clears throat> so we have a, a degree shift in transfer here, which we call concat3, which is a stable map which goes the other way. So this is a degree shifting map which, on, you know, which goes like this, and this is a stable map, and it's even sort of parameterized over the base x and has a lot of nice properties for the exact, I mean, people in this room have written the papers about the transfer maps in there, you know, so that we start. <clears throat> so that means that we on cohomology. So now, see, now the maps go the, the same way. So now we get uh, a map on cohomology going from the cohomology of LX uh, and cohomology of LX going to the, uh, the cohomology. Uh, Of it, which is just taking where here I'm starting to use this black or forward uh, H because this is just the ordinary H, but shifted up by by uh, by D degrees because I want because this was a degree shifting transfer. Then if I want this map here to be degree preserving, you have to shift by by D where D is the, the top, the top dimension of uh, the formality of the x, which was what I assumed this was finite. So that's what you're talking about. <coughs> so this is x is not a bg. So x, 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 so this is this is a, a general kind of construction. You can do x times this is, is finite, but, but x will be it will be a PG yes, when we when we use this. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so so what was uh, observed was that this uh, this makes makes L B G. So now we're in a situation with L B G and again B G is a is an L compact group. This makes this thing here into a commutative uh, so 
give it a ring. And, and what will the unit be? The unit will just be, uh, will be somehow corresponding to the, the fundamental class, corresponding to the manifold G. So instead of having unit just zero things in because of this degree shifting business, the unit, which will be sort of the shifted degree zero, will be non shifted degree D, and this is where the fundamental class goes. Is it easy to explain why it's commutative? Uh, no, this is actually uh, quite difficult to prove. I mean, it has to do with that you can extend the thing to, to, to a field theory, actually, and then you, you mess around with that and, and, and make, make a coordinate there. So it is. It, it, it is uh, it requires a little bit of, it, it's not obvious. Yeah, yeah. So this was, um, so this version, this was written up by Chatur and Miniki. And uh, uh, Hepworth. And Hepworth and Nassman. Um, and we visit, in Ansi and I work, we have to revisit some of these constructions because they're, you know, you, you know, you have to be careful about what all this commutative and associative means for your specific models, which is, yeah. So, so now more generally, so, so what, what, what was the idea of this, of this string topology? This was somehow, you know, that you could, that you could compose these paths if they, if they ended and started at the same point, even if it was not base point, because then you could use this transfer to get things down to the base point. But now you could say, I made this model of what the homotopy fixed points look like. So these were paths from x to, to sigma of x. But now, see, you have a, uh, have a loop just at x. Then it looks like we can also compose these things. So this uh, gives us a new structure. <clears throat> so this is what we uh, this is what we use. Yeah. So I write out the theorem. So our first theorem is that this string structure makes a cohomology of the finite group and lead type a module over the cohomology of the uh, free loop space equipped with the string product. So this somehow, you know, says, okay, we saw that there could be no direct map, but sort of the explanation is that the one is a module over the other, which uh, sort of helps sort of make a relation between them. Between the two. So the conjecture will be that the module is free of rank one? Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Result of, of Quillen and Friedlander. This is really a generalization of the classical thing. This is a, a, a module over cohomology of PG uh, equipped with this ring structure. thing is that um, uh, at, at the E2 page, the first thing you observe that this uh, module structure at the E2 page is actually free of rank 1. <coughs> so there, so at the 
equipped the river, then we just had zero up here. We had the fundamental class living in here. And then we had, in the one, we had the EG. So if we write this as, as the string, saying L EG, we can actually also say what is the, what is the, what is the, uh, 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 no, this is a, this is an E2 page uh, of the spectral sequence coming here. So this will be the, and on the E2 page, this will be the dual Pontryagin product. So there's a Pontryagin product, which would be a product on cohomology. But since we have point duality, we can dualize it to get a, 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 a product on cohomology. And over here is just a regular cup product. And now we also see the relationship to why some of this is a, is a little bit subtle, this thing about uh, commutativity. Because. So the commutativity, is it just E2 or is it. It's just E2, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we see also here on the, 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 the. It's actually not commutative on the E2 page because. You know, in the case where we're at a smaller prime, when there's torsion in the cohomology, the, the, the dragon product will not be uh, commutative. So, so this will basically be commutative if and only if there's torsion in the cohomology, if there's not torsion in the cohomology. So in the torsion-free case, this, this will be commutative in the non-torsion. When there's torsion, this will not be commutative. And this will force differentials in the spectral sequence. Sorry, keep asking questions. Yeah. No. Um, then I'll go on to. <laughs> is, is there a Gaston Haber bracket then in this? There's also a Gaston Haber bracket. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's an E2 structure, you know, coming from this, you know, that you can make this into like this field theory thing. Yeah. But, but if there are differentials, then uh, you will get uh, a smaller thing than free module, or is it going to get shifted in degree or something? Well. So, so this, this, so in the, so this just says that what happens in one of the spectral sequences. So, so, so what should happen now is that you should have spectral, you should have differentials in yes. one spectral sequence, ah. even only if you have uh, uh, differentials in the in the other spectral sequence. And this is sort of what you could do um, ad hoc. That you could sort of say, okay, they had the same differentials, but you can ask, okay, why do they have the same differentials? So, so is in this, sorry. Uh, is, is are there any restrictions on sigma in this? Like sigma is any automorphism. So, so in this sigma is just any automorphism. Yeah. So so when I get later and try to like see how how I mean I won't prove the whole conjecture, but we'll have some steps towards the conjecture. Then then you know sigma will be more specialized. But this is in, in, in this far it's it's completely uh, general. So, so does the theorem say that, that the whole step spectral sequence is a sequence of modules over the yeah. other spectral sequence? Yeah, yeah. So, so the whole spectral, the whole spectral sequence, the one will be modules of spectral sequence over the one. And, and you can also, because you have all this extra structure of the spectral sequence, you can say exactly what uh, what this what this uh, free rank one is equivalent to. So what what happens is that you have that on the in infinity pages, and then you can this is this will be free of rank one over the cohomology of, of, of LPG, if and only if uh, the map which goes from degree D <laughs> in homology now, the top degree here. So now this is this is a this is a you know this is a small point gradualty. The cohomology G will again even for these L compact groups you will have point gradualty and things like that. So you will have a top degree here, and now we can look in homology just by the level the vibration here. You have a map to HD of the uh, of the D D D H sigma if this is not zero. So if for good primes, does it degenerate at E2? Yeah, then, then, then we're okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All sequences degenerate at E2. Right. And then this shows that you have an isomorphism of, uh, 
of, of um, yeah, yeah. The one will be free of actually wearing one over the other, and you have all this uh, this extra structure uh, coming off. And in general, it it boils down to you know just this one class being being non-zero, and this is something which is just just one single class. And this map here does not like it's not constructed in terms of the string structure or anything. So it's like you know like fairly simple-minded, and I would. I actually don't know a good, this is going to be a challenge for the audience maybe, you know, to find a, like a purely algebraic way of describing this class that it hits here. So, because this is... <clears throat> um, so, 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 here's a necessary, <clears throat> uh, here's a necessary condition. So, so, I, I, so, so far we have not used this thing that Q should be congruent to one mod L. So, so this should uh, come into the picture, and uh, for I start to be non-zero, this, this fundamental class here, is, we call it here to be non-zero. Uh, this, this is a, uh, if you look at cohomology on BG, this should be the identity. So, so is it, is it, can it be interpreted as some kind of volume computation? This, uh, that some volume is uh, uh, maybe equal one rather than uh, some integer uh, which is different from one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, but, but this would be good to, uh, this would be interesting if, if that was the case, yeah. Because sometimes you compute <laughs> volume of something and then there is an explicit formula for the volume. Uh, from some kind of Lie theory, right, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. and then you know that's one and not two, for example. Right, 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 right. Right, and that could also because things like that tend to. I mean, this sort of the, <coughs> the heart of the transfer map is like an integration along the fiber, right? So it's it's, it's, it's like the, something like the Tamagawa <coughs> number in the Eidic story. It's tam like the Tamagawa number, for example. Well, so I, you know, so 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 Jacob Lure was giving some uh, some talks in Copenhagen at some point about this work and that, and I remember chatting. <coughs> well, that was before this work, but uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, uh, there could be some uh, uh, relation there. <coughs> okay, uh, okay, so 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 the necessary condition should that uh, this map should be the entity, and this would e.g. be satisfied with. For if you look at the Frobenius or on the lattice operations with Q congruent to one uh, module. So this is <coughs> sort of how this condition comes in. It's, <coughs> it's because if you look at this sort of a necessary condition, because you can look at the spectral sequence uh, on the free loop space, there the map from the cohomology of the base here into the total thing should be uh, should not mod out by anything injection. And this is why, uh, and you know, it would map to the co-invariant since it says that the co-invariant should not do anything to this map here. So this is a condition which is, of course, um, you know, maybe you may or may not like this for the general picture because you can say, you know, now that this is this condition that should be satisfied for this to be. So, so this also is not a complete. It, it does depend on the on the self map sigma. So it should like if you take its volume computation, it should be a volume, but <coughs> some volume involving <coughs> one sigma. But there's also this this uh, thing I want to plug. The, the, the good thing about these these L compact groups is that you can actually untwist them. Uh, This might look, you know, so here we sort of started with the group and then we did this procedure here. But but if we if we now started with a with a finite group of B type, so we can write them as a, a Q here, and then in general we would have a we would have a twist here. So this is a general classification of the finite groups of B type. <coughs> then uh, there's sort of an untwisting procedure which says that if we're at a prime L, this will actually be homotopy equivalent to, to uh, B 
key, and then we have to take homotopy fixed points here over another tau prime, and this will be a new L compact group, and then we say we have two empty prime here. <laughs> I could write off this tau prime. Two prime here and two prime here will be congruent to one one, but uh, which shows that somehow this issue of um, so so it just comes from the fact that since you're working over the elliptic numbers, you have more uh, units. It shows okay if Q was not congruent to to one uh, modulo L, then you could write it as some other Q prime which was congruent to one modulo L times an elliptic root of unity. And that would sort of be a finite thing which would be prime to L. And then you could sort of you know put that into the tau instead of having it in the cube. So you can sort of move it over to the tau. <coughs> and at least here, here you have to make the assumption that tau and L are co for this to work. Then you can just get away with it. So this is a new this is a new uh, L compact group. So that means that if you work in the setting of L compact groups, unlike if you work in the setting of Lie groups, then you know if you're interested in a certain finite group of Lie type, you can always write it in such a way that Q is congruent to one model because you just untwist it otherwise. Which means that somehow, you know, what used to be a super big restriction on the theorem is now sort of goes away because it says, okay, you know, in general it's not a module over LBG, but but what happens? In general, is that there's a, a smaller L compact group where it's in a free module over L B H, where H is a subgroup. And, and this says exactly which subgroup you have to choose, namely the, the fixed points of this of this uh, twisting here. So this is a subgroup. that and, and this also sort of illuminates the original projection, says that the thing that, that L is congruent to one mod, Q is congruent to one mod, L is, is really sort of a technical assumption that you can get out of by sort of changing your picture if you were within these other type groups. Good. Let me try to state. What we know and what we don't know. So, so this map i is it uh, like uh, is it defined over the integers originally? No, no, it's, it's defined over the theoretics in, in this in this in the, uh, over the elliptic integer. Over the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's. <coughs> Yeah, so it has to be something specific to being at a prime. Yeah, yeah. But still, over the elliptic, in characteristic zero, it's defined over the elliptic integer. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's defined over, I mean, on the level of homotopy uh, types. Yeah. This L compact group, it, it has smaller rank than the original yeah. group. Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. smaller rank. It just, mm. you know, since the thing you're modding out by is prime to, to L, it will basically just means that you have an you have a, an action of this small L prime group on the fundamental invariance and you just sort of uh, take, take the fixed points on the yeah. It's sort of very much analogous to this uh, phi D theory that uh, yeah. that occurs in, in like in and uh, Okay, so 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 the first there B here says that if <coughs> if uh, if G is the semi-simple and whether we say reductive or semi-simple is not a big issue here, and and now we have a sort of a real assumption that the cohality here should be should be torsion free. And this is exactly in about in like Avoid these uh, small prime assumptions, 
And you assume that the that this self map induces the identity, and as we talked about, this is something you can you can define your way out of. Or right here, you have four. This is the identity mod mod four. If the other thing is two, then uh, <coughs> then we have an isomorphism here between L and G. So we have uh, we have a class which which is sort of you know, now this is a class in cohomology, so it's sort of dual to the fundamental class in homology, and then uh, multiplied by this class here uh, gives an isomorphism. Um, as as in BD algebra. So so we do get sort of a sort of a fairly uh, I mean you see that these two things are the same as algebra and it's induced by this by this class and so in particular the the algebra structure on both sides are the same and they're also the same as modules over this <laughs> and you can even show that a bunch of the the C node algebra is also the same, so so everything except for P1. So, right. so this is that sort of in the generic case, it sort of gives an explanation of the original question that they're, you know, the reason they're isomorphic was that there's actually a sort of fairly canonical class which which defines this model, but it's not a you know it's not an algebra, it's not a map of spaces because that that kind of <coughs> So these are commutative algebras, but but actually they are also E two algebras, right? Uh, is, uh, yeah, the, uh, at least the uh, topology is. Uh, this, this one is an E two algebra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And is there a way to describe that structure on the other side? Uh, <coughs> that's a good question. Um, so the give some fiber break it. Right. Um, I mean, I don't think I, I don't know a way of canonically defining the structure, right? In terms that you can both put it back and then say, okay, then you get some extra structure in the finite group of each side via this thing here, and that, yeah. So this is a good question. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so. <coughs> So this is, this is the, the, in fact, uh, this this holds also here. Just in this, it holds also as as algebra where where you uh, both sides here would then be modules over the Langford code mod, right? So so um, so this this is also true with the with the ordinary uh, non blackboard code structure on here. Yeah. So so this is sort of. Also, a little bit weird with the sort of an interplay between the. Sure. the so, so this, this, the end result here is for the. <coughs> also, so, so. Okay. Um, so, so right, and of course, also as you know, this was the you know as LVP module. So, so this module struck. The module structure here is a restriction of this module structure from the LVG thing. Because the module structure of LVG was uh, somehow we could think of that as a combination of this dual point dragon product and the and the top product. <coughs> uh, right, so this was so this so but we're still sort of slightly annoyed with this uh, torsion free uh, ex, uh, assumption. So so in complete general generality, if G is semi-simple, uh, one thing to say is that if you look at the outer automorphisms here of um, of, um, of, uh, of what now we can say it in D, or we can say it in or BG. So, so remember by the classification, this was the same as outer BG. Where this fundamental class uh, is, is non-zero, so the, case, the cases where we had such an isomorphism here will be will be 
a normal subgroup, and here goes the fact it's normal, and the subgroup is a claim, and it would be a finite index in the ones where uh, in the RC here, where uh, sigma uh, uh, of finite index. And, and, and so, 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 so somehow, you know, it's a subgroup and it's a finite index. So, and, and the way this subgroup works is that it says that, you know, if you want to prove this, like know which Q is satisfied for, then you can sort of, um, you know, once you know it's satisfied where Q minus one is divided by L to the K, then you know it's satisfied for all the higher ones. So this shows that even in the worst case scenario, you know, for E8, for instance, at, at where you're at the prime two and you're looking at some prime power of Q, then once Q becomes highly high enough divisible by by L, you're sort of okay. And it also shows that if you sort of wanted to check it, you could, you know, if you knew it for say Q equals to five or something like that, you'd be okay. Q equals to three. I mean Q equals to three or because you, you only want to, 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 if you know it once, once it's divisible by once, then you know it's, it's all the high ones. So this sort of shows that somehow generically for any, and this doesn't have any assumptions on the fundamental group, anything. It's just, you know, something saying it's a finite index. So, so if Q is highly enough divisible by L, then we're, then we're okay. And the projections, of course, as was <coughs> conjecture that this was, these are equal. So this is of course still in the very, you know, in the very general setting where we have a, an arbitrary semi-simple group and an arbitrary uh, self map here, and then you can of course say, okay, let's, let's try to at least uh, get rid of the uh, fundamental group issue, mm -hmm. and then say, uh, suppose, please suppose uh, is, is um, simply connected. And uh, so the, the Q's coverage one mod, mod L as, as we can. Um, then <coughs> it's, uh, it's, it's non zero. And hence these things here LPG is isomorphic to, 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 to this thing here uh, in all cases. Uh, except possibly uh, um, if L is equal to 5 and uh, G contains <coughs> the A sum at, um, L is equal to 3 and G contains In four or an EI summit, or if L is equal to three and G contains an EI summit. In particular, this shows that this, this is true, answering the question for all for all uh, classical groups. And even even at the prime two, for instance, for the spin groups, where you do actually have uh, non-polynomial cohomology, and where you have torsion, so so where you know this is not sort of just you know because both sides are are, are polynomial, and likewise here we, we just, for instance, at the prime two, we just have to make the EI exception. So it also works for like G two and, and F four, where we also have uh, which would sort of be bad at the prime two. So 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 so. So, so we are sort of, yeah, so if you're just interested in simply connected, then it's just sort of these eight groups which are still uh, outstanding. And even for those groups, we do know it once, if we, even for E8, we would know it, like it, as long as we would QB high enough divisible uh, by, by L. So. Are you, are you assuming that G is a genuine Lie group here or not? No, 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 this is for an arbitrary uh, L compact group.
So part of the classification of L-compact groups are, of course, that there are not so many L-compact groups which do not come from compact Lie groups, and they are all sort of fairly very nicely behaved. So you can say, I mean, somehow the, the, the most difficult is to handle these Lie groups for, for small prime, but, but in doing this, sort of the setup of L-compact groups is super useful, also because you can do this reduction thing, right? So you, you know you get that this assumption, as I said, was with L Q congruent to one, but L is not a real. Okay, good. Thank you.